Sawadee Krap and hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Brian Hoffman and uh, I am a tour guide and presenter here uh, with Turnstile Tours. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is the third in our series of four virtual programs uh, called Thai Food in America, Passport to the Northeast, um, which we've been hosting every Wednesday morning and we will continue to through next week, through June 2nd. Uh, and this is a series of programs uh, that is sponsored by Thai Select USA and we're exploring Thai cuisine and culture in the United States, um, specifically taking a deep dive into the Thai communities and restaurants within the Northeast of the United States. So again, my name is Brian. I am a white male, uh, early 40s, wearing glasses uh, and a blue shirt today. Uh, and we are going to be meeting some other people as well, who I'm super excited to introduce you to. Uh, on this program, we're gonna be going uh, to two of the outer boroughs of New York City. We're gonna be heading to Brooklyn and Queens, and we're gonna visit two restaurants that are very connected to family recipes and also the local Thai communities. Um, we'll also be chatting with food writer and Queens expert, Joe DiStefano, who lives in the neighborhood of Elmhurst, Queens, which is also known as Thai Town. And he really has immersed himself in the, this community and the cuisine. So we're excited to chat with him about the, the neighborhood and about his background and, and about the Thai community. Um, so if you haven't seen our previous programs, uh, we've got, two previous programs from this series uh, that you are able to still view. Uh, you can view on our website, our Turnstile Tours website through the, the uh, Thai program page. Uh, there will be a link dropped into the chat box so you can link to those or you can go on YouTube uh, to our page as well. They're on there. Um, uh, so uh, yes, uh, the first one was about Thai ingredients and how they make their way from Thailand to uh, our plates uh, in kitchens, uh, restaurants, and at home, and how we get those ingredients. Uh, and then uh, last week, that was last week, wow, uh, uh, we uh, visited two uh, restaurants in the DC Baltimore area, and we had a little uh, interview um, with a professor and author about uh, Thai immigration and the history of uh, Thai American cuisine. Um, so those are both two that you, you don't wanna miss. And then our final one is next week, um, which is Sawasti Samtam Dur, where we will be going live to Bangkok uh, to the restaurant Samtam Dur, which has locations all over the world, but we're gonna go to their Bangkok location, uh, chat with them, and we will also be receiving a Thai language lesson from uh, Professor Ticha Ho, uh, who will be giving us some very useful uh, tips on, uh, on how to uh, say some uh, important phrases, uh, both in greetings and, and uh, ordering food. So, so don't miss that. Um, we also have uh, a map that um, will be shared. There's so much, so much exciting stuff. Uh, as part of this sort of online festival that we've created with Thai Select, um, we have an interactive map showcasing the Thai Select restaurants in the Northeast. Um, so there's videos and recipes. Here's a little, a little sneak preview of that. You'll be able to explore it on your own um, uh, through the, the link that you'll see in the chat box. Um, yeah, and this is the whole Northeast of the United States. Um, I'm excited because I'm, uh, I'm actually uh, hitting the road, going on a little road trip uh, later today, in fact, and I'm going to be hitting at least one of these restaurants. So I'm using this and that's a great way if you're, if you're traveling or, or these are one of your home areas to, to find out the best Thai restaurants. And of course, there's also explanations about different, different culinary regions in Thailand as well. So lots to see there on the map. Um, so uh, I, I would love to, uh, to get going on this program today. So we're gonna start our program um, heading to a neighborhood uh, in Brooklyn. Uh, it's right along Smith Street in the Cobble Hill, Borum Hill area. Uh, it's a neighbor known for its diverse restaurants and strong local community. And uh, we're gonna visit what well, we've seen. Chef Tan is here, one of the best Thai restaurants in the borough. It's Wanisa Home Kitchen. So, um, so Chef Tan, hello, how are you? Good to see you. Hi, hi there, hi there. Hi, so, so you're joining us from, from the restaurant, from Wanisa Home Kitchen. And, um, and tell us a little bit about what, what made you decide to open up uh, this restaurant? What's your background? Well, Where do you come from? And how did you come to this? So um, I got um, you know I've been working. Um, I used to work with my mom, so um, I learned from her, and she's a executive chef. And so um, since you know, like um, mom's cook for um her kids, so um, 
I would like to share this recipe as well to this neighborhood. Yeah. So, and your mom had a, another restaurant before this as well in New York. Is that right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. What, what, that was in, was that in, you said it was in Chinatown? Yeah, right. Oh, you remember? <laughs> I do that's remember, right. of course. Yeah. All right, cool. Yes. And All so right. she was, she was cooking traditional Thai, uh, Thai dishes there? I'll say yes. And um, pretty much that uh, we call that uh, home style cooking. And then when did you open Wanisa? Back to 2017. Yep. Uh, yeah. And, um, and so your mom, of course, is very influential and you learn the recipes from her and that's uh, part of how you came to open up this restaurant. But now where does the name Wanisa come from? Um, that has after my daughter. So your daughter's name is Wanisa. Right. So it really is a family, uh, a family restaurant. I mean, inspired by your mother's recipes and now named for your daughter. How old is your daughter? Right now it's for something. She's so the four. same, same age, same year with this first one. So she's going to grow up knowing that there's a restaurant named for her which is right. exciting. She, she's been to the restaurant, of course. And yeah. Um, so uh, now I know, so the restaurant is in Brooklyn, but you actually live in Queens, right? The neighborhood yes. that we're going to, going to be going to in a little bit. Um, how long have you lived there? And where did you come from in Thailand again? I'm from Bangkok and um, I came into the, the state um, in the year of 2000. Okay. And you moved to Elmhurst, is that right? Yep. And you've lived there since. So, so what is what is that neighborhood like? I know there's a large a large Thai community there. Exactly. I walk yeah, around but when you and I see that um, many people just you know like like walk in Thailand, <laughs> people who yeah. mostly are Thai. Yeah. Um, now, so tell us a little bit about the food at Wanisa. Um, uh, what are some of your signature dishes? And uh, you mentioned the recipes are, are, are your mother's. Um, so, so tell us a little about the food. And sure. we can actually uh, share yeah. some, some slides and some photos of the restaurant as we're, as we're talking. Yes. First thing, you know, um, you know, I, I, Thing that I'm very really proud of the um the pad thai sauce recipe things um that we cook from the scratch and also we do the sauce based on tamarinds that's gonna be um pretty much that sauce called like is authentic and is like um um old school recipes to do um, yeah. to do the sauce that way. But you also, don't you also have a, a, a sort of non-traditional pad thai, the crispy pad thai? Yeah, because I saw that um, many days ago, I saw that um, that's where it becomes very popular in Thailand. So I try it here too. That's, yeah. So there's all these crispy elements added to the, to the dish. Is that right? That's yeah. right. So let's see some of the photos and we can, uh, there's the, the pad thai. That's the traditional one, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually uh, ate there at, at your restaurant a, a few weeks ago and I had um, uh, this, uh, this rice dish, uh, cow kluk kapi, is that correct? Yeah, you got it right, it? cow kluk kapi. I did get it right. Okay. Yeah. And it's, that what was a dish that I actually, I, I was not familiar with and, um, I think we're um, gonna pull up that slide maybe. Um, it was, uh, well, here's the outside of the restaurant. Of course, you have an outdoor area now for, uh, for COVID safety uh, reasons. Um, but uh, talk about that dish. It was uh, a shrimp paste. This is it right here. Yeah, can you tell us yep. about this? Sure, um, that's, this made to actually that um, some place called, um, there's the, we call Royal Menu. Because uh, that, like, we, um, this is like the food that um, actually that or originates from the um, the loyal memory and the loyal yeah. uh, menu staying 
So and well, you can and, see that it includes yeah. everything. It looks like yeah, just a bit of it, everything, just like that. Yeah, you see some mango and some uh, Chinese. It's the sweet Chinese sausage and the dried shrimp, um, and the the herbs, the cilantro and the the shallots. Yeah, it was delicious. Um, and uh, and I think there's some other photos here we could go through and we could talk talk about as as well. Um, uh, we see the pad thai, and I believe this is the dish you're going to cook for us today. This is the, is that correct? This is the mango salmon? Yes, it is. Yeah, this so, is a seasonal menu things that uh, we're doing here. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? I think, I think it would be nice to see a little bit of the restaurant. Maybe show us around a, a little bit, and then we'll head to the kitchen and... Um, and and you'll show us how to prepare the the mango salmon. Now, is salmon a okay. traditional a traditional ingredient in Thailand? Is that something that you'd find in in dishes there, or is that something that sort of has been incorporated in in, uh, in the U.S.? Somehow, this is something that um, I create because um, by the season is uh, getting warmer, so um, I think that's something that healthy. And also um, something refreshing. Yeah. And besides, when it's come to the summer, it's become um, it's come to the warmer thing. Well, besides, um, you know, we have to create something um, to add something like a little bit of sweetness and sourness that uh, help uh, increase the appetite for uh, for people. Yeah, absolutely. And those that balance of flavors is is what it's all about. So you see, yeah. we see all the ingredients laid out. We see the salmon and the the mango and there's tomatoes and shallots and cucumbers. So yeah, why don't you uh, prepare it for us? Sure, the first thing that we have, um, I, can, I have to tell first that, I have to say first that what ingredients that we have, number one, we have the, um, the, uh, the steak cut of the uh, Norwegian salmon. Mm -hmm. This is wild salmon. The size is about, um, is around 10 ounces. So we have a uh, chop up in leaf, some cashew nuts, and uh, the mint tops for the uh, decoration. And um, this is a uh, red onion and scallion, chop up everything and cucumber, cherry tomatoes, already cut in half, and um, papaya. Uh, some places that they, they do a uh, green papaya, but some places they do a uh, little bit red. So I do kind of right in the middle, so that not too soft and not too green, because it's green sometimes that people feel like too sour and it's uh -huh. really difficult for some people that um, to consume. And we uh -huh. have the, um, the young dressing sauce thing here. And um, one teaspoon of uh, uh, chopped dried garlic and some chili. This is Thai chili iber, red iber Ooh, chili, yeah. and some Thai dried chili here okay. to add some spiciness. And I like so, yeah. to use uh, both of the uh, chilies because um, the color and the taste, this is um, give you the um, the spiciness, but also um, the, this one can give you some both taste of the flavor. It can give um, some complex of the spiciness as well. Yeah. All right, so let's um, let's see how it all goes together. Sure. Um, pretty much, we will cook the salmon. This thing should take um, you know, about ten to fifteen minutes. Um, uh, what about the mango? The mango part. Can you put the mango uh, salad together for us, and then maybe we'll we'll come back for the final plated dish. Sure. First of all, so we have all the ingredients here. Here we have the garlic. So the garlic's going in, right? And both chilies. Chili. All right, so and you're mixing the the secret sauce here, this secret dressing. Yep, secret. So, <laughs> you can't tell us, huh? 
<laughs> nope. so that, that's similar to addressing that us. No, even tell so you it's not going to be secret anymore. <laughs> but sweet and sour and obviously you're adding the spicy to it as well and, and the herbs mm -hmm. and vegetables here. So yeah. And everything looks so fresh. I mean, the, the mango we can see is like at, you were mentioning the, the, just how you want it, but everything else is like so beautiful color wise. And you can see how fresh those tomatoes look. Yeah. So um, because when we do the salad, this, um, the most important is uh, the freshness of the, uh, the vegetable. Mm -hmm. If you mix the fruit, the, you know, you, you have to make sure it's all fresh. So the mango, when you chop it up and you just um, bring it with uh, running water and uh, just, you know, if you want it uh, to be extra crisp and fresh, you just add um, some, um, you know, you can soak it in ice water. Oh, and, to keep uh, those colors. Some, yeah, to, uh, to keep the color and add some, um, like um, a bit of um, um, salt. Uh -huh. That would help, yeah. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah. So you're mixing them all, and, and then uh, the, and is the other yeah. stuff the 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 peanuts and the the cilantro those go on as a garnish at the end? Is that right? Yeah, right. And this is all because um you know, do not try to um stir it too much because it's that um you know, ruin the ingredient because it's all vegetable and you have to be gentle. Right, and then are, those are those are peanuts, or are they cashews? It was oh, they look like cashews. It is. It is. Yeah. Okay, I I got it wrong there. Uh, and again, it's cashews, cilantro, and is it Thai basil? The other, the other herb. This or? is um, cashews and uh, shop up mint. Oh, I'm it's not mint sure. Leaf. Yeah, mint leaf. But oh, mint, mint leaf. Oh, yeah, okay, but nice. you can add cilantro. Cilantro is going to give you um, a good taste as well. It's going to yeah. boost up the taste. It's pretty good. Many Thai salad that um, that uh, they also use cilantro in the um, in the ingredient. Well, it looks. I mean, it looks delicious already. And then the 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 cooked salmon isn't even a part of it yet. So I know it's going to look yep. fantastic. Much? Looks, um, yeah, I know it takes a little. It takes a little while to cook the salmon. So I think um, it's, I, I think maybe what we'll do is we will, um, we'll, we'll head over to Queens and then maybe we can come back so we can see the final product. Unless you think it's, uh, you cook the, how long do you cook the salmon for? Someone is asking. 10 minutes? Think about, about 10 minutes. It depends on the, uh, how strong the fire you, that uh, you use. But for at the restaurant, the commercial, we have a very strong, um, I'll put on the fire, so it's pretty much you can see the color uh -huh. of the fire. Get you see that the the blue means sure. very strong. So the red yeah. is kind of when you use the, the the fire at home, you mean the stove at home, it's gonna give you more red color. So the red color is mean is lower temperature. So the blue is higher temperature. Yeah. So and you flip it as well, right? You, you would turn it right. over. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to now. I was just uh, someone was asking if you here. Oh, just beautiful! Oh my gosh, that's worth the price of admission right there. Look at that, gorgeous. It's not gonna take long because um, you know, as I said, it's very strong. It's so hot. <laughs> yeah. It's very hot. Oh wow, I do love salmon. So this um, so yeah, so this is something you put together for the season. So how long is this gonna be on your menu for? Through the summer. Through the summer, yes. All right. Okay, um, really a beautiful sear there. Yeah, as, as Andrew was mentioning. Um, so I, I think what we're gonna do just in the interest of time, we're gonna head over to Queens to actually the neighborhood that Chef Tan lives in. Uh, and we're gonna chat with Joe and Chef Busaya from Sabai. And then, uh, and then at the end, uh, we won't forget, we'll come back here so we could see um, the, the final product here, if that sounds good. Yeah. All right, so th Chef Tan, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you at the end, um, uh, but we're gonna head we're gonna head over to to Queens now um, uh, to the neighborhood of Elmhurst. Uh, we're gonna do the commute that Chef Tan does every day, although we're gonna do it virtually, so it's gonna it's gonna be quick. Um, 
Ted was telling me earlier that traffic was very, very bad this morning. So thankfully, we uh, today we don't have to deal with that uh, with technology. But we're going to uh, we're going to start our intro to Queens, and we're going to a uh, welcome to Queens uh, from someone who probably knows it better than maybe anybody else. Certainly, when it comes to to food and, and culture. Um, so I, I'm pleased to introduce a uh, food writer um, and Queens expert and tour guide and uh, all around uh, Queens man. I don't know. I don't exactly know what the, prop, the proper introduction is, but Joe DiStefano. Um, hi there. Sawadee so Kav. Sawadee so Kav, good to see you. Good to see you too. Hello, hello. Welcome to uh, Thai Town. It's nice to know that uh, Chef Tan uh, and I live in the same neighborhood. Yeah, we, you might even live on the same block. I, we, we didn't it, get into those specifics yet. It's entirely possible. <laughs> so you're, you're outside Sabai, correct? The, the restaurant. I, you to. know, I am in their beautiful uh, dining area. Oh, amazing. And, and I am outside. And uh, we can uh, see if we can get a view of it from where I sit. Try this again. Bear with me. Yeah, no worries. And oh, yeah. there it is. Here we have Subai. So, so yeah. So in a little bit, we're gonna go inside. We'll meet the chef. Uh, yeah. Uh, and see another cooking demo. But Joe, tell us a little bit about you. How did you? So I, I don't know if I introduced you properly. I'm sure you've got many specialties. Uh, but how did you get involved in exploring and writing about uh, about the different cultures in Queens? Are you even, are you from Queens originally? I know you're from New York. You know, it, I, I was uh, born in Queens and I grew up on Long Island. And in uh, the late nineties, I moved to Woodside, Queens. And I quickly discovered that the, uh, the seven train, which I would later learn was dubbed the International Express was the best way to experience all sorts of food and cuisine. So, I lived in Manhattan. Again, I, work, I worked in Manhattan and lived in Woodside and I would take the train further into Queens and walk along Roosevelt Avenue and try a different cuisine every night. You know, So one night it might be Mexican, one night it might be Colombian, maybe Filipino, certainly Thai. Yeah. Yeah, and if so, if people don't know Queens, I mean, this is by far the most diverse part of maybe the most diverse city in the world. So, so you're really at the, at the forefront there. Um, and so, uh, and so you, you mentioned, of course, the Thai community. How did you get so immersed in that community itself? And how did you learn about it? Well, that, that, that's an interesting story. So I, I like to say that <clears throat> if you're like me, if you like to explore food and culture and you spend enough time eating Indian food or Chinese food or Thai food, you know, and real Chinese Indian or Thai food, eventually you're going to wind up at the Thai house of worship. You might even wind up living in a Thai household like I do now. So oh, wow. basically, I had been exploring this neighborhood for about five. 20 years, you know, and I, I've seen it grow up and get even more uh, Thai, you know, so basically by, you know, writing about and doing tours of the neighborhood, I got to learn more about it. But really, what really got me into it was moving to the community in late August, because there, there's nothing like, even though I was four subway stops away, I was mm. still an outsider. But now you're now you're in the middle of it for sure, and we've got we've got some photos I think of 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 you in the community and some of the some of your your favorite places as well. Yeah, you so mentioned that the, this is a, a Thai. Yeah, that's Wat Buddha Thai, you know, and the uh, it's a Thai temple, Thai Buddhist temple, and the way I know that I'm in a real Thai community is that there's a Thai Buddhist temple here, <laughs> and plenty of restaurants. Yeah. And I think we've got some photos in, I think it's inside the, the temple. Is this? Uh, so this on, on, on the right, that's the beautiful reclining Buddha. And on the left, that is the, uh, the shrine room to the, uh, the Jade Buddha, which was actually brought from Bangkok. 
Wow. Do you know how long the temple has been in the neighborhood? I don't recall, but I'm going to say from the, at least the late 80s, mid 90s. So it, has, it was there. It was there the first time I came to the neighborhood in the late nineties. Yeah. So there has been a time. I know it's it's sort of grown, and and certainly we can talk about how the restaurants have evolved and changed. But but the community's been there for a bit, for for a few decades. A absolutely. Yeah. Um. And so let's see the next photo. I think the next photo is there's a. Uh, oh. Oh no. Well, this photo here. Yeah. Tell me about what's going on here. Sure. So, so, so first of all, um, uh, happy Vesak Day, uh, which is a big Buddhist holiday. I believe it's yeah. Buddha's birthday. And uh, this is a photo related to another holiday. Uh, so Songkran took place around May, around uh, April 19th. And even though it's a month later, they've kept these stone orbs out in front of the temple. And uh, these are some friends of mine from a recent food tour who are applying gold leaf that they give out to, uh, uh, you know, to ensure prosperity for the coming year. Hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I know that uh, many of the monks uh, from the temple eat at some of the local restaurants, of course, as they... I. Yes, some of them do, although uh, actually a lot of talented home cooks cook at the temple. Ah, right. Okay, of course. Yeah, and then so as I think there's another, let's go through some, a few more photos here. Let's, let's talk about some of the, the markets and, 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 and the restaurants in the neighborhood. So, Sure. So this is uh, Pinoy's Thai Thai Grocery, and uh, she's a real staple of the community. So if you want to buy a Thai mortar and pestle to make mm -hmm. some tom, go to Pinoy. If you want to buy a vessel for cooking sticky rice, go to Pinoy. If you want fresh durian when it's in season, and uh, and she's great. You know, she's the kind of person who, uh, if you shop the store, she'll tell you. You know, you might even walk away with a recipe or two. Ah, love that. That's fantastic, which I'm sure you have. Now, I'm curious, have you, do you do much cooking yourself at home? You don't need to. You live in the center of all of it, but. I, I don't do a lot of cooking at home. I reheat very no. well. <laughs> and, and, and I should just point out that sometimes Pinoy has uh, wonderful northern uh, regional Thai food from uh, uh, Chef Bunam of Am Thai Bistro delivers her food from Brooklyn. So often on weekends, she'll have great stuff. Ah, nice. And Northern Food, we're going to be going to Inside Sabai as well, which is one of the specialties of, of that restaurant too. So, so we'll, yes. we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about that. So, um, so this is Inside the Market. and uh, So th this is a different market. Yeah. This is Pata Market. Pa Pata Market is a great place. Lots of prepared food. You can kind of see in the foreground on the right and lots of snacks you can see underneath the uh, their logo great place uh so I, I in the in the comments i learned that chef tan who we just were chatting with actually shops at pinoy the previous market we were talking about of, and of, co for, of course he does pinoy has does. lots lots of herbs that she grows herself and imports from oh, florida wow. and just so much stuff and he also shops at Three Aunties, who was featured on uh, our very first program of this series. Uh, yes. So you can check that out, as we mentioned. Um, so why don't we, I'd like to just talk about uh, how, the, how the neighborhood is a little bit different in terms of the regionality of the restaurants. Like, you know, you find Thai restaurants all over the country at, at this point. Um, but I feel like right in that particular neighborhood, you've got every region you want, right? Could you expand yeah, that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So about when I first came to the neighborhood, there was probably one Thai restaurant, Ayada, which is a lovely restaurant. And it was sort of a, a generalist, if you will. So the way that I know that there's a lot of Thai people here is that now there's food from all over Thailand. So let's say we have... Um, the first regional specialist to open might have been Huggy Sarn. 
So Huggy Sarn specializes in food from the Isan region, which happens to be where uh, chef the chef at Sabai is from as well. Uh, and then uh, La Moon, which specializes in food from Chiang Mai, opened up. And this all sort of happened in, say, the past five years. And so now there's so many Thai people here that there are even restaurants devoted to specific dishes. So M. Kalman Gai, which pins its fortunes on just one dish, Thai-style chicken and rice. If you're familiar with Hainanese chicken, it's sort of the Thai version of that. Wonderful place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's great. I'm already, uh, <laughs> my mouth is watering um, just talking about this. And um, yeah, and as uh, Andrew mentioned, uh, next week we're going straight to Thailand to uh, focus on East Isan, one of the, the regions that Joe is just, just mentioning. Oh, I can't uh, wait. I love Easton food. Oh, my God. Yeah. And Sum Tum Dare is, is, you know, one of the pioneers in terms of, I think, bringing it to the, the United States um, or introducing it, you know, to the United States. So, um, so in a minute, we're going to go inside with Amanda um, and Chef Busaya. Um, but so what, tell us about your relationship with Sabai. How, how yeah, do you know so, them, obviously eating, but tell us so, about so it's how a, you came to it. A, another funny story. I had been exploring the neighborhood for... 20 years, I kid you not, before I even set foot or knew about Sabai. The way I found out about Sabai is I moved into this Thai household in late August, and my roommate said to me, he's Thai from Bangkok, he said, you know, you need to go to Sabai. You need to try their Pad Thai. It's just like in Bangkok. You'll see. Wow. And you'll see that, you know, the color, and it's less sweet. And, and he said, you know, the chef is from Isan, you should try one of their Isan dishes too. You should try um, the uh, the goi nu, which is sort of a chopped uh, pork stir fry. I, I forget if it's pork or beef, you know, with Isan herbs. And I tried them both and they're delicious. And uh, now it's my um, my favorite secret place. I haven't put it on my tours yet, but no, it's great. And I've become friends with uh, uh, chef, chef and the staff here, and it's lovely. Oh, amazing. Well, we're gonna meet them in a moment. Before we go, we have a question from, um, from Kathy. Uh, she's asking, is there a restaurant you would recommend for someone to get an intro into all the various dishes to sort of decide which region might be a favorite? I guess a restaurant that does a little bit of, of all the regions? I, I would say uh, Ayada on Woodside Avenue and Sabai are both great for that. Hmm. And I'm sure the sh staff could maybe walk you through that this is from Absolutely. Isan, this is from uh, Bangkok, yeah, from the Southern, southern region. Um, great, yeah, great question. Um, uh, and thank you, Joe. So Joe, why don't you stay on with us uh, as we go um, uh, to Amanda's uh, video where she is with Chef Busaya um, at Sabai. Uh, inside, you're out. You're, I guess, outside. So we'll bring we'll bring the worlds together. So, um, so Amanda, are you are you there with Chef Busaya? Hi, Sawadee Kap. Sawadee Ka. Good to see you. So good to see you too. Uh, so yeah. So I love that Joe Joe told that story that he has been exploring um, the neighborhood for so long, but he didn't know about your restaurant till he uh, moved in uh, to a. Uh, to a, a living situation with with other Thai people, so um, so I think that speaks a lot to, about about the restaurant. Now, now tell us where are you from in Thailand again, um, and and when did you learn to cook? Uh, I'm from like a, a small town near the Chiang Mai, the northern of Thailand. The northern part of Thailand. Okay. Yeah, and I'm learned from my mom. Yeah. Yeah, my mom cook every day. Yeah. And did you, did your mom have a restaurant or she just cooked at home? She, she, she had a small, small restaurant in the, in a small town. Yeah. Yeah. And so when did you come to Queens and when did you open Sabai? Oh, more than 10 years. Yeah, more than 10 years. And you own Sabai with your husband, is that right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So um, I, we spoke a little bit with Joe about this, but how is your food here different from many of the other Thai restaurants in New York? Mm. Are, there, are there any dishes that you're making that you've never seen anybody else make? Yeah, we have a lot of the dish. Like uh, we try to make like uh, the real Thai food, like uh, the, the original one. Yeah, from Thailand. Mm -hmm. oh. Because um, the, and, the, the, um, the neighbor is the, the here is the, the, the Thai community. Yeah, for Thai people. Yeah. Well, those, mm -hmm. are, the, those are the places I want to eat at, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so I, I uh, something else that I know that happens at your restaurant, um, it, you have a, 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 a sort of a popular, you're a popular spot for late night hangout for many oh. high restaurant workers, right? Yeah. And they, they don't just, get, yeah. They don't just come to eat, but they also, what else do they? <laughs> get drunk. <laughs> get drunk, of course. <laughs> of course. And like a relax, relax, enjoy after he, uh, they work hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. you, told, uh, you told us that the name Sabai actually means to relax, sort of. As a yeah, thing, yeah. Though. So that's appropriate. That's mean but, that. But there's also karaoke. Doesn't karaoke happen? Uh, after 11 uh, until like uh, 4 o'clock in the morning. For <laughs> <laughs> the long time. Of course. And is the kitchen open that? that lady yeah. Now? So yeah, here's a setup, the setup of the karaoke at Dubai. <laughs> I love uh, it. <laughs> if you want to like uh, hungry the Thai food, when you wake up at night, you can order, <laughs> you can come and order. <laughs> Oh, and we, we the Thai. <laughs> oh, amazing. And Chef Tan from Wanisa has just said that he sung karaoke there at your restaurant with friends. He's, yeah. he's been there, of course. I love the world's <laughs> coming together. Oh, that's amazing. So, um, so I, where do you, um, where do a lot of your ingredients come from? Do you, do you buy your ingredients from the, from the neighborhood? Um, uh, some, um, order from Thailand. Yeah, you cannot fry here. There are some ingredient here. What's an mm -hmm. example of an ingredient that you can't find here that you have to get? Like uh, something we have lot and we uh, that you call like a paper corn or something, a paper corn. Oh, yeah. a special but one. That it, you get but to... it's different, different from here. Ah, D different one. Yeah, you cannot yeah. find here. Fry it here. Oh, mm -hmm. amazing. Well, so you, mm -hmm. you can find it at your restaurant in the dishes if you want a traditional flavors. Um, yeah. so, um, so I know that we're, you're going to do a, a quite a bit of cooking for us as well mm -hmm. today. Tell us about which dishes you're going to make for us. Today I'm going to make is two dishes, like a pad thai, the original pad thai and ah, the lap nua. Yeah, <laughs> and lap nua, the, 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 the one is like a from northern Thailand. That's the Igidian from Thailand. And that is, is that, that's a meat salad, is that right? It's like a saute. Oh, the saute. Pork. Yeah, the saute. We were mm -hmm. been talking about so many dishes. There's a, there's a meat salad that is, is very unique. Um, mm. Sort of like that you make, right? What is it called? Yeah, yeah. Beef goi, right? The Joe said, like a beef goi. It's like a, like a tartar, but like we a, make like yes. a Thai style. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So I, I've not been able to try that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cindy, uh, Amanda and Joe have, have been out there recently and have all had a big feast. I'm very jealous of them. Um, yeah, so why don't we, so I think, why don't we head into the kitchen? Uh, okay. I, I'd love, we'd love to see the, the famous pad thai and, uh, mm -hmm. and the lard noir. Okay. Um, and, and Joe, as, as we're here, if you have anything you'd like to ask or add or any, uh, um, uh, you dropped in Gonoa uh, Tartar. I guess mm -hmm. that's the, the name of the dish we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, today we're going to make like a, the lab meal first. Uh, uh, the, the pad thai. Yeah. Oh. Today we're going to make like a chuan pad thai. Okay. Uh-huh. It's a tunic. Uh, this is a brown tofu. Uh, we, use, tofu. we use the chai. Yeah. Okay. The chai. The chives, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so she's okay. got the greedy ingredients laid out with the the shrimp and the uh, uh, the the rat uh, the turnips you said as well. 
Is that turnip? turnip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Those cool. are preserved turnips, right? Those yeah, are... so. yeah, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, and we know you've got to get this very, very hot, right? That's one of the keys right. to making proper stir fry or pad thai. We made the, the pad thai sauce already. Okay. We had already because like the restaurant. So, and those are the secret ingredients. And uh, and so, Joe, you told us. I don't know if your your audio is on, but you told us a little bit about that you you'd never tasted pad thai like this before. You. This is very different from other pad thais. What what was it about it that that you noticed? So, so so first of all, there's a lot of bad pad thai in New York City, and I think we all know that it sort of skews too sweet or maybe even too spicy. And you know, what I noticed about it was really just the balance of it. You know, uh, Chef Pasaya showed us her mise en place and. One of the things in there is the, the pickle radishes really lend a lot, like a nice sort of crunch and uh, saltiness to it. And, you know, one of the things my uh, friend from my house said to me was, you know, look at the color of it. And it's got a, it's got a good interplay mm -hmm. of sourness, spiciness, sweetness, and uh, it's, just, it's just so good. Yeah. Well, so, and we... Uh... And we see her uh, adding the new the noodles already the the rice noodles. Yeah. Um, oh, they they cook real quick. Real fast, yeah. All right, so the noodles are are in there, and the. Yeah. I'm excited to see the color because that's something you're you're mentioning, Joe. Um, and pad thai, for those that don't know, is a traditional, really a traditional street food. From Bangkok, right? Yeah. But obviously available all over the country. You know, that's what my buddy, my friend said. You know, it's just like in Bangkok. Yeah. Which I have. Uh, have you been to to uh, Thailand yet, Joe? No. I, so far, Elmhurst has proved sufficient, but I but I have <laughs> to get there sometime soon. Yes. Me too. Well, we're going live next week on Wednesday, so get a little bit closer on uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, and, thank God. And, and I'm so looking forward to Professor uh, Tish's uh, Thai lesson because basically all I know how to say is, you know, hello, goodbye, thank you, delicious, and drunk, and food words. So hopefully right. I'll get to know more. I, I no longer walk into a Thai restaurant and insistently say, can I have that Thai spicy? Because what usually happens is, in an effort to be accommodating, the waiter tells the chef, you know, hey, there's some farang in the kitchen who wants it spicy, spicy, and they put in a lot of chili and garlic, and you feel like you're going to die. And what happened was I spoke <laughs> to Andy Ricker, and I said, Andy, why is this going on? And he said, they know what it's supposed to taste like. You know, you just order medium hot or whatever. Oh, that looks uh -huh. great. Yeah, it really does. I can smell it from where I'm sitting in the dining room. <laughs> Me too. I can smell it from home. Oh, and so there's some chives. On... Yes. Oh, 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 beautiful. And and, and you're right. The color looks. Uh, I feel like not as as red um, as it. Didn't they put the, the paprika in there? Paprika. Yeah. yeah a lot the of. Paprika. Uh huh. To give it sort of that color and this. This looks much more, uh, uh, un I guess, untouched. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yum. Yum. And I know uh, Cindy has been uh, mentioning that it's by far the best pad thai she's ever had as well. So, <laughs> um, And then we're also going to do the lard noir, right? Is that right, Chef? Uh, yeah, right. So tell us about the lard, lard noir again. It's a, it's a stir fry. Yeah, it's a stir fry like a... Uh, ground pork with like uh, the, the 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 spicy thing and oh, I have a lot of veggie in there. Okay. And chef, you get the spice mix for your lobner from Thailand, yes? Yes. Uh huh. Do you this do you one. get the ingredients? Do you, yeah. Do you get one, them separate? Yes. yes. Do you get I them mean... separately and then combine them? Mm. 
we 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 combine them too. Yeah, we order the some from the Thailand. I see. You order them separately and then blend them. Got it. Okay. It's the the liver and the skin pork skin. Okay. We so we make everything in there. It's a shallot, chopped okay. shallot, scallion. This is like a ulanto. Cilantro. Main lip. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And mint. That's it. <laughs> okay. And you said this is a, a northern dish. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. I, I just wanted to take the opportunity to say Isan Misa and Plus. <laughs> Isan Misa and Plus. Yes. <laughs> say that three times fast. <laughs> no, it's interesting because, uh, you know, papaya salad's eaten all over Thailand. So. Some of my roommates are from Bangkok, and some of them are from Isan. And the ones from Bangkok, they don't really, really like a lot of the fermented fish flavor mm. in their in their sumtom. They prefer just lime and chili, and maybe not even as spicy as northeastern folks do. Yeah. And we've we've talked about that on previous uh, 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 programs, and it is explained in that map. But for those that don't know, those those regions uh, are, are, are pretty distinct in terms of, of the culinary uh, um, approach, you know, so, so yeah, sort of funkier, fishier, spicier from the Northeast than you would find from Bangkok generally, as Joe's saying. Um, so yeah, Chef Busaya, tell us what, you're, what you've put in there. What that is the, is that the ground pork? Ground pork, uh, scallion. Okay. Uh, the red onion, red onion, chopped and red onion. So you've added the the sauce yeah, uh, to this. this sauce. Uh huh. The liver, pork skin. So this looks like it'd be it have a lot of textures as well. This particular dish, right? A lot of crunch and spicy, and a lot of balance, a lot of okay. spiciness. And... Mm. It's the one thing we've been working on these programs for a while now, and. One thing we have not been able to figure out is how to pass these flavors on to the viewers at home. When we, okay. when we figure out how to give the food to you, you we'll be set. I, I'm sure they I want you smell. To smell I can that. imagine. I want yeah. You to smell that. I want to smell it. We'll, we're going to work on that for, uh, for next time. I don't know how we'll do it, but all right. So it's, yeah, and the colors here too. I mean, you can. You can see how flavorful this is. I mean, I just, ah, and the minced pork mm. and the smoke coming out. Yep, I'm ready for lunch for sure. And some more chives there and uh, the beans, or the long beans. Long beans. Ah, long beans. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Long beans and some scallions and uh, I think cilantro and it, it's uh, nice to eat that with sort of like cool, crisp vegetables. It's a good counterpoint like that. to the spiciness of the uh, the meat itself. Yeah, beautiful shot here. And, and beer, I'm sure, would also uh, um, be nice with that as well to cool you down and maybe even to... Yeah, I know sometimes beer can actually enhance the spice levels depending upon the the the, the hoppiness of the beer. So if you want to do it. that, <laughs> beautiful. Well, Chef Busaya, thank yeah. you so, so much. Yeah, let's You're get a, a look at, mm. yeah, my mouth is watering. So, <laughs> I'm so thank you. I want to, I'm, I'm reaching through my camera. You can't see it, but I'm trying. <laughs> well, thank you so much. If there's any other uh, final questions for Chef Busaya or, or Joe, yeah. we also would like to go back to to Wanisa. So now we have to cook salmon here right yeah. right now. So just to make sure first, uh, when we cook the salmon, we have to make sure that um, we got the right temperature because it's going to give us, uh, you know, bad bacteria. Of course. Yeah. So make sure you have um, temperature. And the right temperature that we supposed to get is uh, above 140 
about 140, 145, that you're gonna be sure that salmon is cooked and ready to serve. Okay. So right now, you see, because it's out of stock for a while, so it's not gonna reach 140, 145 anymore. Sure, it's, sure, uh, sure. It's 140 yeah. Fahrenheit. Yeah. So um, right now, here's the final step that we're going to do on um, that. We're gonna put it in a ditch. Oh, sorry. Let's start first. Uh, all right. We'll do the, the salad first here. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're, you're plating it. And that's just on a, like a banana leaf there. Uh, oh, you're yes. putting the, the salad. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. If we could only, uh, <laughs> if the seven train only went from Sabai to, to Winisa, we'd be in, Good shape. We could uh, we could start we could start at one and move on to the other. You could you could still get there. You, the subway. Uh, I guess it's the you probably have to transfer to the G train. I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's so it's great about this program. You can actually uh, visit both of these restaurants in one day. Ah, yeah. Oh, and it looks like such a such a perfect lunch. I mean, especially for the summer refreshing and, and hearty. I mean, that's a beautiful piece of fish there. All right. All right. And so here we go, our, our, our finished uh, mango salmon. So, so thank you so much, Chef Tan and Chef Busaya. Um, and, uh, and thank you so much to Joe DiStefano as well for joining us today uh, and sharing his experiences. Um, and, and thank you, uh, Thank you everyone for joining us today and especially thank you for Thai Select uh, USA for sponsoring these programs and for our interactive map that you'll have to check out. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and thank you so much everyone. Uh, and, and next week we'll be back where as you heard, we're going live to, to Bangkok with some Tumder and we are gonna have a, a, a very special Thai language lesson. So, so here I love this. I feel we're all together here. I talk about a community right here. <laughs> So thanks so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and, uh, and we will see you soon. So long.